another proudly we hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours starring Lee Tracy and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. A very spine-tingling title to our play, Lee, House in the Fog. <laughs> a very spine-tingling title, Ken, and a very spine-tingling play. A tale of high speed on a California highway, which leads to... Uh, well, Ken, we'll be ready for the first act after your very important message. Thanks, Lee. I do have a most important message for all the young men and young women of America. The United States Air Force needs volunteers. It needs volunteers right now so that they can be trained to fill specialized vacancies that exist in radio, radar, electronics, and many other critical fields. Go to your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station and volunteer for service in the Air Force today. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Paul Carr, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hailed production of House in the fog. One of the characteristics of our age seems to be that we're always in a hurry. Paul Carr was a perfect illustration of this observation, always in a hurry. Live fast and furiously was his credo. It may have been one of the reasons for his success as a writer, for even his books and plays had speed. At 35, Paul Carr was a fast-moving light in the literary world. A regular comet bound everywhere, in a hurry, always in a hurry. What do you mean the flight's been canceled? I'm sorry, Mr. Carr, but all flights have been grounded. The fog. The pie. i got to be in San Francisco by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. I thought you guys flew on anything. No, sir, not anything. Not when our passengers' lives might be in danger. Oh, poppycock. Your ticket people sang me a different song this morning. Oh, yes, Mr. Carr. We'll get you there in plenty of time. No, Mr. Carr, there'll be no delay. The weather moved in very suddenly. I know, it always does. Well, you've got all the answers. What am I going to do? We'll arrange a berth on the train, if you like. Train? There isn't any train I can get that'll put me in San Francisco before 10 o'clock. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know of any other way unless you drive. Oh, maybe you can supply me with a car, too. I'm a stranger in town. Looks like you'll just have to wait until the fog moves out. It might move out tonight. Fat chance. Oh, I don't know. Mr. Carr, I do not run this airline. I only work for it. I don't control the weather either, and I don't see any reason to take it out on me. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, miss. I didn't mean to take it out on you. It, it, it's just that I'm in an awful hurry. i, I got to get to San Francisco, that's all. <laughs> The auto service. I want to get to San Francisco by morning. How much do you charge? Uh, what time in the morning? By 8. You don't want to drive, you want to fly. That's right. But with the fog, I can't. How much? Just you? That's right. To go to Sacramento, the two of you can split the cost for there. Okay, how much? 50 bucks. That's robbery. That's right. Mm. Well, I want to get started right away. Where are you? Hotel Hilton. I'll be in the lobby in five minutes. What's your name? Paul Carr. What's yours? Mike. A cash in advance, Mr. Carr. If you guarantee to get me there by eight. Barring anything unexpected. Yep, I'll get you there. It's awful foggy. You want to go or don't you, Mr. Carr? What about the other passenger? He's here all ready to go. A woman? That's right. You got any objections? Oh, no, no, no. I guess not. Okay, then. Hang up so we can get started. Mr. Carr? Oh, yeah. You, 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 you're Mike? That's right. Uh, what are you staring at? <laughs> Nothing. You're just uh, kind of big, that's all. Yeah, uh, I'm big, all right. 
Is that your bag? Yep. Give me the dough and we'll hit the road. Give me a receipt and we'll hit the road. <laughs> okay, Mr. Carr. Here you are. Nice and businesslike. Now I'll just count this. Uh, even, Stephen. After you. Hmm. Fog's gotten a bit, bit thicker since I came back from the airport. You won't be able to make much time in this. I made time in anything. You'll probably need a new set of nerves by the time we get to San Francisco. I like speed. Never bothered me a bit. You, uh... Ain't that Paul Carr guy that writes the books now, are you? <laughs> ah, yeah, I'm afraid so. You don't like him? I ain't much for reading. I only read one. Uh, well, part of one. It wasn't my type. I'm a mystery fan when I do read. Why don't you write a mystery? <laughs> I'll write one, Mike. <laughs> and I'll dedicate it to you. Uh, here's the car. You want to sit in back with the baby in front with me? Mm, what's he like? Not my type. Young, kind of nice-looking, uh, refined, uh, real day. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I'll sit in the back. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Fenton, I think she said. Miss or Mrs.? Well, I didn't go into her history. I didn't think it was any of my business. Oh, I see. Okay, Mike. Get in, and I'll put your bag in the trunk. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, my name is Paul Carr. I'm Judith Fenton. Well, Miss Fenton, it uh, looks like we're going to have a long, foggy trip ahead, huh? Yes. Full set, folks. Full speed ahead. Oh, wait till you hear this baby hum. If it'll fly, it's all right by me. Are you in a hurry, too, Miss Fenton? Somewhat, but but not so much of one that I want to risk getting my neck broken. Uh, with me at the wheel, ma'am. I'm the best driver this side of the Rockies. kidding, was he? Oh, I wish he'd slow down. Oh, don't worry. He knows these roads, and he knows his car. But the fog, you can't see a foot. I have a cigarette. Maybe that'll help. Oh, yes, I would like one. Thanks. How you doing back there? Holding on. Yeah, she really purrs, doesn't she? What do you do about uh, seeing the road? She just follows it like a cat. Too fast for you? No, that's all right. Go as fast as you like. This is plenty fast enough for me. In fact, I'd feel much better if you slowed down. We're going to get Mr. Carr to San Francisco by 8. I can't, ma'am. What is it, Mr. Carr? A matter of life and death? <laughs> no, no, not quite. I have an important business appointment. I can't afford to be late. Is a business appointment, no matter how important, worth risking our lives over? Oh, now, I don't think you should look at it that way. We'd be just as safe here as we would be on a plane or a train or anything that goes past. I'm sorry, I don't agree. Really, Mr. Carr, I... I, I hate to see you late for your appointment, but... Well, would you mind terribly if we slowed down a little? I, I'm nervous. Okay. Mike, ease off the accelerator. The lady's not in a hurry. Maybe she's asleep. We could give her the gun again. Miss Fenton, are you asleep? No, I'm not. Oh. You, you wouldn't like to go any faster. The only way I'd really like it is to go slower. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, why didn't you walk to Sacramento? Your books are deceiving. I had the idea you were a gentleman. Mm -hmm. I'm a lout, and I'm in a hurry. <laughs> you are. The guy! Hold her! What happened? What happened? Miss Fenton! Oh, Miss Fenton, are you all right? What? What? Oh, yes, I, I think so. What happened? Well, we missed that curve, I guess. Mm -hmm. right, see if we can get out this door. Mm -hmm. No, we're on our side. I'll have to climb out through here. Mm -hmm. I'll go first, and I'll pull you out. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're all right? Huh, I'm not sure of anything. Just get me out of here. Take it easy now. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, there. Now, give me a hand. Uh, Hold tight. Uh, up, 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 you come. Okay? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sit down there. All right. Now, light yourself one of these. Well, let's see how Mike made out. Mike! Mike! Are you alive? Where are you, Mike? Oh, uh, looking back. Look at that car. Are you okay? Yeah, I guess so. But that's wrong clear. But 
Will you look at that car? What a mess. <laughs> we're just lucky we're all in one piece. Yeah. Is Dame okay? Oh, she's shaking up a bit. We're going to climb up out of here and see if we can flag down somebody. Oh, look at my car. What did you have to be in such a hurry for? Isn't that a driveway? Well, I think you're right. It's a driveway. Oh, I wish you'd had the same attitude about being in such a hurry. Oh, I'm sorry. Really, I am. Well, you should be. It's a miracle none of us were hurt. I'm hurt. My honey's nothing but a pile of junk. Well, it's just what you deserve. You should know better. Oh, you sound just like a school teacher. Well, that's because I am. And the children I teach are a good bit younger than you in years, Mr. Carr. But mentally, they have far better judgment. I'll bet you're awful rough on them, too. Hey, look. There's the house. Lights in the windows. People must still be up. Ah, big place, isn't it? Not many houses around here. Well, here goes. Maybe you'd better let me do the talking. Now, Miss Fenton, why don't you just save your breath? Good evening. Hi. We, uh, we had, a, had an accident back there on the road. Could we use your telephone? Do come in. Thank you. <sighs> that feels better. Could I have a drink of water, please? All right, this way, please. Would you mind waiting in the living room? Oh, that'd be fine. Uh, but could I use your telephone? I'm sorry, sir. That's one thing we don't have out here. No telephone? Wow. <laughs> well, what do you know? A classy joint like this and no telephone. Make yourselves at home. I'm Morton. Should you need anything, just ring. Do you... Uh, do you own this place? Oh, no, sir. I only work here. Well, well where's your employer? Employer? Oh, yes. Uh, he'll be here soon. This is the living room. Oh, well, I'll be. Don't tell me you're victim to the fog, too. Huh? Yeah. I, yeah, I guess we are. I, our car ran off the road. Well, my name is Rogers. We got here a while ago. Same sort of thing. Flying and had to come down in the fog. Afraid I didn't make a very good landing. Oh, these other people were on a bus that ran off the road. Amazing that we all found our way here. <laughs> Slightly. Well, uh, what do we do? Just... Sit here and, and wait for the owner of this nook to show up? I guess that's about all we can do. They don't have a phone. Something very odd about this place, if you ask me. Well, Judith, why don't you sit down? I will, and the name is Miss Fenton. Oh, no, it isn't. It's Judy, whether you like it or not, and I'm Paul. Well, since we're being so familiar, could I have that drink of water, please? Oh, sure, you bet. Oh, where, 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 where do we ring for that character? Well, that's another odd thing. We've rung for him from time to time, and he never shows up. Well, I'll go find a kitchen myself. I've already tried. What? No kitchen? No, you, you can't get out. What do you mean, you can't get out? Well, the doors won't open. They won't even budge. Same for the windows. Even if you could open up the windows, it wouldn't do you any good. Look at those bars. They must be at least two-inch cast iron. We'll see about that. Well, what's the matter, Mike? I, I can't do it. It doesn't even budge. Oh. Paul. Paul, what does this mean? I don't know. It, it's crazy. The whole thing is crazy. <laughs> Tracy starring in the role of Paul Carr in the proudly we hail production of House in the Fog will return for the second act in just a moment. These are critical times. Each day, the headlines bring news of grave situations. Headlines that indicate our freedom is being challenged, our American way of life being threatened. But there are headlines, too, about the number of young men and young women of our country who are meeting this challenge by volunteering to serve in our armed forces. And right here, I'd like to point up the needs of one particular branch, our Air Force. To continue the marvelous job it is doing now, 
and what it may be required to do in the future, more young men and young women are needed. Here is an excellent opportunity to help your nation build and maintain the best equipped Air Force in its history. Also, as a member of the Air Force, you can take advantage of countless educational facilities which may help you plan a career. Drop in at your local Army and Air Force recruiting station today. Talk to the recruiting sergeant. Learn for yourself how you can be of tremendous help to your country in these critical times by volunteering in your Air Force now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Paul Carr, we present the second act of The House in the Fog. To sleep? No. For some reason, I don't feel sleepy anymore. I don't even feel thirsty. It's all kind of weird. Mike and I should be trying to tear the walls down to get us out of here, but I, I, I feel kind of resigned to the whole thing. Like you'd rather wait here to see what's going to happen. That's right. Kind of grows on you. Yeah. But there wasn't any point in being in a hurry anymore. Suddenly, getting to San Francisco... It's about as important as getting to Sacramento. Yeah. (laughs) Seems we all feel alike. (laughs) Here's your chance to write a mystery. Hey, you drew that mystery card, and I'll be sure to read it, all of it. Usually, when you write a story, you know how it's going to come out, even a mystery. What gets me, among other things, how is it that all of us manage to find this place? Roger's there. He says he landed on the side of a mountain, knocked his plane all to pieces. Those four over there were with him. None of them got hurt. There are a dozen people here from the bus. The bus went off the side of a road like we did. The people here somehow got separated from the other passengers. Where are the other passengers? What are you trying to say? I don't know, Judy. It sure is screwy. Hey, let's ask that creep of a butler what goes. Yeah. Uh, well, wait a minute. How, how do we get hold of him? He's got to come back sometime. Does he? Hey, look, Doc. What do we do? We sit here till the roof falls in? Well, what do you suggest, Mike? <laughs> We've tried every way that there is to get out. So you can't get out the windows and you can't get out the doors. What's to keep us from knocking down a wall? And how do you knock down a wall, Mike? There are about 20 of us here, aren't there? Well, if we break off a few table legs and things like that, we ought to be able to do something. What do you think, Judy? Well, I I find I'm changing again. I... Well, I'd like to get out of here very much. I don't like it. It me. Oh, I'm getting sort of restless myself. In fact, I'm starting to get sore again. I say, okay. Let's get out of this place any way we can, even if we have to burn it down. No, you're talking. Listen, folks. I don't know how you feel being kept here like this, but we don't like it. We want to get out. The doors are no good. The windows are barred with iron. A mic here thinks we might knock a part of the wall down. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So it's funny. But is it funny being stuck in this place, hell, prisoners? Anybody who wants to give us a hand is welcome. The rest of you can sit there and look ridiculous. Now, don't get angry. Now, take it easy. There's no need losing our heads. After all, where can you go if you do get out of here? It's a terrible night, and we seem to be miles from anywhere. Maybe our host does have a strange way of making us welcome, but you must admit it's comfortable and not unpleasant here. I'm sorry. I'm not that patient. Well, you can't go about wrecking a man's house. Well, you can if he won't let you out. I'm sure if you'll just be patient for a little longer, this this whole thing will be cleared up. 
Maybe it will, but we're not waiting. Well, I'm sure that the rest of us will insist that you don't start tearing the place apart. Oh, is that so? Listen, Bob, leave us not have any infractions. You might calm yourself. Look, right. Where the devil have you been? I'm sorry, sir. I was called away. The car will be here shortly for all of you. Oh, well, that's a relief. A car for all of us? Well, we're not all going to the same place. Quite correct, sir. But you'll all start from a central point. It will be much easier that way. Hey, you see, I, I told you everything would be all right. Hey, what's the idea of locking us in here? Locking you in? I'm afraid there's some mistake. Oh, yeah, you can say that again, bub. You know, we couldn't get out of here. We tried. You tried? How oh, extraordinary. Would you mind telling us who owns this house? I'm sorry. I must leave now, sir. The car will be here shortly. It would have been here sooner, but the weather always throws things off. Please be patient. Hey, come back here. Let me get that thing. It just won't give at all. I've thought it all over. When Jeeves there, or whatever his name is, shows up again, we don't stand here like a bunch of wooden ducks. We go through that door, no matter what. But he said the car was coming. Listen, Judy, nothing has been right since we got here. We don't know who owns this house or why we're held here. I'm through being docile. Let the others go for a ride. I say we break out of here and keep running until we get back to the road. I'm all for that. I'll run interference. Well, what about you, Judy? Well, I've come this far with you, or, or because of you. I might as well go the rest of the way. Good. Now, let's sit here and keep our eyes on that door. Just as soon as it opens, we go through it, and the devil takes a hindmost. He said shortly. I wonder how he measures time. I feel like a sprinter waiting for the gun. I feel like busting somebody's jaw. As the good Mr. Rogers said, let's not get excited. What time is it, Mike? My watch got broken in the festivities. Mine's all smashed. Time stopped at five after nine. Well, that takes care of that. I didn't really care, anyway. Why don't you ask one of the others? The way they're all sitting there, I think they were dead. Mm. Yeah. Like a bunch of zombies. Come on, let's go. Spear, uh, what are you... Out of our way, Bob. Hold on, Judy. Get him out of the way, Mike. He, he's as strong as an ox. Really, this is a fine way to act. Go on, you two. I'll handle this guy. Run. Come back here. You can't leave now. The front door's wide open. There's a bus in the driveway. H head off to the other way. Oh, oh please, can't we stop now? Uh, not till we re reach the road. But I can't run anymore. Please, let's rest a minute. He thinks somebody was after us. Okay. Now just for a minute. What about Mike? I don't know. That guy was really giving him a hard, hard time. You shouldn't we wait till he catch up? In this fog he might miss us all together. Come on now. We, we've got to go on. Oh, what's the rush all of a sudden? I don't know. I just have a feeling we should hurry. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Well, you'll have to help me. I broke the heel on my shoe. Oh, oh, of course. Here, I'll help you. I wish we could wait for Mike. He'll be all right. You know, if it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have gotten away. Yeah, you're right. He hung on with everything he had. I wish I could understand all this, Paul. I really wish I could. about 
without a doubt. The big guy's all done, Sergeant. If his body hadn't blocked that engine, the woman, the man, they'd be done too. You got much chance? Oh, they'll pull through. Both pretty badly banged up. Tell them to get the stretchers and get them down this fast. What a mess. Some guy always in a hurry. Hurry for what? To get nowhere. First the airplane, then the bus, then this auto. Tracy will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. For many weeks now, I've been telling you young men and young women of America that the United States Army and the United States Air Force need you now more than ever before. The ever-changing global conditions of today make it mandatory that our Air Force be up to strength and ready at all times to carry out its mission. Visit your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station and find out how you can best serve. If you meet the physical and educational qualifications, you can join the aviation cadets. And when you successfully complete your period of training, you'll receive your commission in the United States Air Force. You'll be proud of your silver wings. And don't forget, you'll be serving your country when you're needed most. Volunteer today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. House in the Fog was written by DeWitt Cox. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Join us next week for... Proudly we hail, won't you? Our play is called Hideaway, and it's a story that'll keep you guessing right up to the final curtain. I hope you'll be listening. Goodbye. So <laughs>